In the previous video, we've created an example HTTP operation. Let's take a look a little bit at the uh, Web API Kit runtime and configuration. I've created an API examples initialize class that inherits from API Web Kit initialize class, which is a mono behavior. In this class, in awake, I am setting my logging in the configuration class of the Web API Kit. The configuration class has several named properties such as log verbose, log info, log warning, and log error that we can either set to true or false and that's going to determine the level of logging that we're going to use. Uh, some other settings include destroy operation on completion. What happens at runtime, the HTTP operation, a part of it is added into your scene and when the operation is complete, it gets destroyed. If you don't want that operation to be destroyed from the scene, maybe for debugging purposes, you could set this to false. The persistent game object name is a game object that's created at runtime to facilitate the communication between Web API Kit internals and your operations. And I will show you that in a second. Then there's another default HTTP client, which if you do not mark up your class with the HTTP provider attribute, by default, it will add it for you and the www provider will be used. Uh, same for the timeout. If you don't define a timeout on your operation, by default, it will be set to 10 seconds. There are also a couple callbacks. When a HTTP, any HTTP operation starts, there is a callback that you can define. Same when an operation finishes, there is a callback that you can define as well. After you've defined these settings, the first thing you have to do inside of your scene is bootstrap the Web API Kit. And this is done with configuration.bootstrap. In our project, the API examples initialize class has been put to the top of the script execution order to make sure that it is the first class executed before any of your operations. So let's take a look at how some of this configuration is applied at runtime. Here in our WAC API examples initialize game object, we have our behavior that's going to set some of these configurations. Uh, the WAC exist examples game object has our HTTP operation that we've created in our previous video. So for the sake of demonstration, let's not destroy the operation when it is completed. So when we start our scene, the first thing that is going to happen is that persistent game object is going to get created. This object persists across scenes. This helps us ensure that the HTTP operation completes even if a scene has changed. If we continue the scene, what's going to happen is our HTTP operation is going to initialize and it's going to add our HTTP provider to the persistent game object. And you can see this here. Uh, normally, this behavior would be destroyed after it's completed, but we've turned off that functionality. Here we could see a little bit more detail about the operation that was performed, its ID, the URL, and how much time it took. Going back into our configuration and settings, um, you can also add your own custom settings into the configuration and pull them out at runtime. You can do this by using the set setting method and to retrieve it but by the get setting method. Um, the main things to remember about configuration is 
bootstrap and have the behavior run in the beginning of the scene before anything else happens. Let's take a look at our get car models again. The path, the first parameter here is null. And this is the base URI name. Let's change this around a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out the part of the path that is always going to be the same for our API and leave just WAC V1 Cars Honda. Let's replace this with HG example. Now what we can do inside of our API examples initialize let's create a public string public string WAC API example and set the common base URI to this variable. Now what we want to do in code is configuration set base URI of name HG examples to WAC API example variable. And this is HG example, so let's change this to example. So what's going to happen is when the scene starts, it's going to set this name value hash of HG example to the value of our common URL. And when our operation starts, instead of passing the operation a absolute URL, we're going to pass it just a path to our resource, and we're going to tell it, hey, go look for the base URI at hg.example. So back in our scene on the API examples initialize script, we're going to turn destroy back on, and we're going to turn off all the logging. And now that if you run this example, we shouldn't see much information. So we didn't see any information about the requests or responses being made, but we do see our output of the model here because we've used debug.log to output it. If we wanted that output to be controlled by the verbosity of our logger, what we can do is we can go into we can go in here and use configuration log our message let's copy this over and let's use severity of warning comment this out so now if you let it rebuild still notice that all the logging is turned off and if we run we don't see any output which is correct and we can go back and turn on the warnings and we should see our car models here in this video we've learned how to configure the web API kit the importance of bootstrapping it and bootstrapping it early and how to control our logging.